pushing, noise vomiting DJs are deified. Millennials have been stripped of the ability to diffuse their adolescent rage and alienation into music or subculture. So they turn to the mental ghetto of identity politics instead. And that hasn't gone so well. What has my generation contributed to advanced popular culture over the last 30 years? Humiliatingly little. Seriously, what have we contributed? Can you name anything positive? Gangster rap? A movement that encouraged millions upon millions of young people to aspire to act like degenerate criminal thugs. Yeah, that worked out great, didn't it? But then look at someone like Hopsin. Here's a guy who raps about how retarded and destructive gangster chic is. A guy who tells young people to get off drugs and live clean. What happens to musicians like Hopsin? Yeah, some of them get signed to big labels, but then they get parked for three years, or their albums are deliberately given no promotion. They're never allowed to obtain superstar status. How did rap music go from really good to so dry? Real artists get shelved and whack ones get famous. To lead masses brainless, a smart mind is dangerous. Because their message represents a threat to cultural Marxism. A threat to the toxic identity that the music industry force feeds young people. Look at youth counterculture. In the past, youth culture was spearheaded by students. They created the counterculture which then trickled down into pop culture. What are students busying themselves with today? Safe spaces, political correctness, virtue signalling, and gender studies. When did being cool become about parroting everyone else's opinions? They are socially conscious citizens, and are provoked by the loathsome presence of an unmutual. They are sheep. When did being hip become about writing laborious Facebook posts about how progressive you are. As Theodore Dalrymple noted, the pressure to conform to canons of popular taste, or rather lack of taste, has never been stronger. Everyone's petrified of constant social media surveillance by their peers. Reactionary! Rebel! Disharmonious! Rebel! Reactionary! And we force ourselves to swallow this rotten culture, just so we can feel an affinity with our peers. So we can fit in. That's why there's no discernible youth counterculture. It's all predicated on conformity. You must conform. Yes, sir. It is my sworn duty to see that you do conform. And kids today are so satiated with the deluge of entertainment on offer that they have no time or interest in rebelling against the received culture. No time to create their own look. No inclination to form their own ideas about the world when it's so much easier to just regurgitate what Russell Brand or Meryl Streep is saying. Whether it be fashion, art, music, literature, comedy, culture has been completely sanitized. There is no counterculture. And that's why, with very few exceptions, everyone looks the same. Same haircut, same beard, same clothes, same meaningless tattoos, same lazy cynicism. Same political views, same outlook. There's no authenticity, there's no daring, there's no individuality. Look at modern conceptual art. The postmodernist war on absolute truth has spawned the demented belief that anything whatsoever can be considered art. Why is modern art that requires skill or displays awe inspiring beauty ignored? in favour of tawdry trash. Literally trash. Have you ever visited Tate Modern in London? It's a giant building full of scrap metal, concrete blocks, urinals, and this. Whatever it is, they call it an art gallery. It more closely resembles a landfill site. What does this look like to you? Dog food and a turd? No, it's conceptual art. The postmodernist decree that literally everything has to be part of a social justice movement has also inspired feminists to offer up their bodily functions as art. A giant ass was nominated for the Turner Prize. I mean, forget full retard. We've gone full idiocracy. The years passed and mankind became stupider at a frightening rate. The number one movie in the country was called Ass. And that's all it was for 90 minutes. It won eight Oscars that year. So we're told to genuflect over the deeper meaning of a six-foot butt crack while actual works of art are being renamed 
because the original title might be offensive. Look at modern theatre. We went from Shakespeare and Oscar Wilde to this. They're making everything that's supposed to be exquisite, hideous and repugnant. What's supposed to inspire us now dehumanises us. When ugliness is venerated as beauty, we know we're in the depraved late stages of a civilization. Popular culture is so invasively vulgar that it's often cited as one of the factors in the radicalization of Islamic terrorists. Jihadists in the West often immerse themselves in this culture and then become suicide bombers as the only form of repentance. That's how bad it is. That's right, Jersey Shore and Miley Cyrus are actually seen by terrorists as legitimate reasons to attack the West. And who could argue with them? But seriously, when we defend Western civilization, we're not talking about popular culture. We're talking about the Sistine Chapel, not Piss Christ. We're talking about Beethoven, not Bieber, but we've become bored of what we've inherited. The true meaning behind the rich tapestry of our cultural heritage has been forgotten. Popular culture as it exists today actually represents a direct threat to Western civilization, since it provides our enemies with a justifiable reason to destroy us. A civilization is starting to uh, unravel, okay? And that, that you can find it again and again and again through history. That's a culture that no longer believes in itself, okay? And then, and, and then what you, what you invariably get are, 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 you know, are, are, are people who are convinced of the power of heroic masculinity, okay? On the edges, whether they're the Vandals and the Huns, okay? Or whether, or whether they're the barbarians of ISIS, okay? You see them, you know, starting to mass on the outsides of the culture, and that's what we have right now. If we allow this to represent what we stand for, whatever moral superiority our ancestors earned will be eviscerated within a generation. That's why we need to constantly savage this notion that popular culture represents Western civilization. It doesn't. The weaponization of popular culture, as I've described it, is merely the reassertion of cultural Marxism. By making the culture that underpins our society completely meaningless and therefore rudderless, it can be easily overthrown. We need to reject popular culture in all its grisly, grotesque, dehumanizing forms. We need to encourage a new cultural renaissance that is once again inspired by beauty, talent, and the exaltation of human accomplishment. Click the link below to subscribe to the channel, and for more breaking news go to Infowars.com.